Our next speaker this morning is considered one of the US's largest and um, uh, most significant experts on human trafficking. Uh, Laura Letterer is now with the NGO Global Centurion. She has published the leading study on the connection between healthcare providers, sex trafficking, and abortion. She is the former deputy uh, senior advisor to the Secretary of State, and she helped to create the Office to Monitor and Combat Trafficking in Persons at the U.S. Department of State. She has also testified before uh, the U.S. House and the U.S. Senate on matters related to human sex trafficking. And Ms. Letter, thank you for joining us today. Uh, thanks. Thanks so much, Mary, for that introduction. Um, I'm here to support the law requiring parental notification before an abortion is performed on a minor. Over the past five years, a new focus on health and human trafficking has emerged as a result of my 2014 study entitled The Health Consequences of Human Trafficking, an original study of hundreds of victims of sex trafficking in the United States. It provided the first evidence that women and girls who are trafficked into prostitution suffer serious physical and mental consequences and seek care for these health issues while they are trapped in the trafficking situation. Since its publication, the study has been cited thousands of times in peer reviewed journals and replicated by other researchers. Federal, state, and local governments have implemented trainings for healthcare professionals to recognize trafficking situations based on the recommendations in my study. One of the key conclusions of the study is that because of the physical and emotionally abusive situations, trafficking victims often seek healthcare providers for abortions, treatments of injuries, or birth control, among other health issues. These encounters with healthcare providers offer a life-saving opportunity for trafficking victims since, she, since they are alone with a trained authority who can contact family members on, or law enforcement on their behalf. The findings of my study are clear on the connection between trafficking, gynecological, and reproductive health issues. We found that 71% of survivors got pregnant at least once during the time they were trafficked. 21% got pregnant five times or more. 55% reported at least one abortion, and 30% reported multiple abortions during the time they were being trafficked. In addition, trafficking victims sought care for health pro uh, problems while they were trapped in the trafficking situation. In fact, 88% had contact with some kind of health care provider while they were trapped in the trafficking. 63% sought care from a hospital emergency room, and 57% went to a clinic, like a neighborhood clinic or a women's clinic. The study also found that trafficking victims were taken for abortions during the time they were trafficked. 68% said their abortions were performed at a clinic. 16% said their abortions were performed at a hospital. And 14% said their abortions were performed by other. These encounters with healthcare providers trained to recognize the signs of trafficking offer the victim the opportunity, sometimes the only opportunity, to escape the life of slavery with the trafficker. One survivor who was trafficked when she was a minor said that she got pregnant six times and that her trafficker arranged six abortions. She said, I had so much scar tissue from these abortions because there were no questions asked and no follow-up. In a couple of cases, I had bad infections, so bad that I eventually lost my fallopian tubes and had to have an, a, a, a hysterectomy. Over half of the survivors who said they had abortions said the abortions were forced by the trafficker. Some traffickers threatened their lives if they became pregnant and then used intimidation to, to force the abortions. In interviews, survivors told stories of being beaten around the stomach and womb when their traffickers found out they were pregnant. Abortion and sex trafficking transcends the usual political boundaries of the abortion debate, since it violates both the pro-life belief that abortion takes an innocent life, and also the pro-choice ideal of a woman's freedom to make her, her own reproductive choices. The problem of abortion and trafficking should not be hidden, suppressed, or set aside as a fringe issue. Instead, it should be a part of any comprehensive anti-trafficking program. Unfortunately, these issues exist right now in a highly polarized atmosphere. So the fallback position has been to ignore pregnancy, 
miscarriage, abortion, and other gynecological and reproductive issues encountered in trafficking. From education and awareness problems, from trainings on health and human trafficking, and especially from law and policy. The unintended consequences of ignoring these issues is that the entities such as clinics that could uncover trafficking and save the life of a trafficking victim are missing these opportunities. Illinois' current law on parental notification of abortion offers a key opportunity to recognize a trafficking victim and to free her from a lifetime of slavery.